Happy New Year! Welcome to my top 10 2017 movies. Yes, this year I saw more than I did last year. Each year I get to see more and more movies. First year I did this, I saw like, it's less. I saw more the next year and I saw even more, which jam-packed. It makes me a little bit more hard to do the list every year. So I keep on adding and adding and adding and movies. And it's, it makes it more harder to pick the best ones this year. I think this year my list is a little bit more stricter on some things. So now I have honorable mentions this time around. So the honorable mentions are Wonder Woman and Lego Batman. They are both great DC movies. It 2017. It was scary but funny. War for Planet Apes. It was very great detail in those apes. Beauty and Beast. A beautiful movie. Conrad vs. Super Sentai Cho Superhero Tyson did not suck like the last or as much fan service. Those are my small notes about those movies. So some of these movies were on my top 10 list heading forward when I saw them, but then I saw other movies and I pushed them back and back and back. So this is my top 10. So now let's get into it. So, number 10, Thor Ragnarok. Now this is how Thor should be. He should be like this Asgardian-like Jock or guy that thinks he's fooling himself a lot. I like it that it was just like a comedy action. And director Taylor T did an amazing job with this movie. And I hope what we see from Thor, we're probably going to have to see Thor like this in Avengers Infinity War. Cannot wait for that movie to come out. But yeah, this is what Thor should have been from the beginning. And this is the best out of the Thor trilogy. I think Taylor T says he wants to make a Thor Ragnarok 2, which Technically, it'll be Thor 4, but he's, what he said, it wants to be Thor Ragnarok 2. So, that's what he said. But, yeah, make Thor like this all the time. He's probably not going to be like this in, the, in Avengers Infinity War, so it's a good little treat we got from this movie. So, number 9 is Get Out. Now, I thought this movie was just going to be like, like making like African-American people like white people almost. If you've seen, ever seen that Jamie Foxx show where he's in a hotel, in that one character, I forgot his name, He's very like stuck up and like whitish or whatever. He's African American, but he's like very stuck up ish and white, kind of like that. Um, I thought they were like somehow like that, but it ends up being much more weird and freakier. It was so bizarre for me to like this experience with this movie. <laughs> it was creepy. Oh, a side note. Uh, the only thing that bothered me was like the actress that was the the, the white chick. I forgot her name. I forgot her name. I forgot everyone's. I just go through a lot of these movies, like, characters, but she looks like the girl from Fifty Shades of Grey, and, uh, yeah, she looks like that, and she also looks like, she also looks like Jennifer Aniston for some reason. It was at certain points, so I was like, okay, she looks like the girl from Fifty Shades of Grey, now she looks like Jennifer Aniston. I just had a, a little minor problem with that, but overall the movie is just great, and it's just, like, it's freaky. And also, it was Jordan Peele's directorial debut, and you would think that he would do a comedy movie. So, number eight. Win River. Now I want to do this because of Elizabeth Olsen because I'm a big fan of her from like from, from her small roles from the Avengers Age of Ultron and Captain America Civil War and also Jeremy Renner as well. Like, I really like his character from the uh, war as well. That's basically why I want to see it and like, like you don't like see them as like the characters from the Marvel movies. You see them as these new characters that they play. It was like kind of like based off of a true story. So it's also a murder mystery movie. We have Olsen as the cop and like, we have Renner as the guy that knows the areas around the place and also it's Indian territory. So it's technically part of the Indian character because he has an ex-wife that was Indian. So it deals with murder, mystery, loss of people, also isolation between like some of these sheriffs in this town in up North Dakota have isolation. I also read a book about like Native Americans of today are like they're isolated and it shows that in this story they're also isolated as well because like no one expects them to do that much now in this time when it's all mostly all white people that does everything some racism there's think somebody calls also a whitey whatever white chick or something, something like that but yeah it's great so on to number seven dunkirk now i'm not the biggest christian nolan fan i do not like the dark knight trilogy that much. And those are good movies. And I thought this movie was going to be like his mind bend trip stuff that he does with the movies. Some mind bending trip stuff that he does with the Dark Knight and then there was Interstellar confuses the audience and like he's sometimes confusing <laughs> in his movies like even though with the Batman movies are a little confused. That's why I'm not a big fan of them but this movie, I, I really like it. I think this is, for me, this is the best movie that he ever done. It shows like people of war and young men of war like they go to they go to war to fight for the country, but also they're normal humans. And he also 
just want to get out of there. They just want to go home. No matter which country they're for, they just want to get out of it. And also, the, from the trailers, if that was I me, mean, like, is a weird, crazy person that goes, like, keeps, like, looping through the war or whatever. That was gonna be like that. The trailers threw me off because it is Christopher Nolan. I thought he would do that weird, a time loop, whatever, something like that. But it wasn't. It's very great. Overall, so great. And so, number six, Coco. Pixar and Disney always knock it out the park with something. Not with the cars, even though I like the last car movie, but still, they know what they're doing when they bring another culture into this Disney family, and it's beautiful, and it's sad during the end. I, this is the first time, this is one of the first that made me cry from the first time I saw it. Usually it takes me a while, like I watch like a, more viewings of it and then I start crying. Never really the first showing I actually did cry from it. Come on Disney, keep on doing that magic. If I ever become a big time director or whatever I ask my dream, I would like to do a Disney movie, something like this. So, number five, Baby Driver. Edgar Wright does another fun movie. Baby Driver with the, it's cool, it's fun. The music, you get in tune with the music. It's music through almost all throughout the ages. I don't remember any hearing any modern music. There's also a lot of mention of songs with Baby in it. Because <laughs> the main character thing, Baby, and like stuff like that. And little stuff like that. Small note, I saw this movie with my friends, Charles and Sarah. Um, I don't know, that really sad point. I just had the blues, and I just needed someone to cheer me up. So, it was either like, watch Dunkirk or Baby Driver, and I saw Baby Driver, I think she saw Dunkirk because I saw this at home. It took a while to get it on DVD. So, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Sarah and Charles, if you're watching. I'm probably going to send it to you. So, number four, Spider-Man Homecoming. Yes, this is how you do it, Sony. Give it back to Marvel. Give it back to the home. Homecoming. It was just fun. Still, like, thrilled by this movie. I'm also still thrilled by Robert Downey Jr.'s performance in this movie. Also, Tom Holland. Don't mention, don't forget about Tom Holland, our new Spider-Man. He's, he's great, too. But still, like, I, I, the highlight of the movie is probably Robert Downey Jr.'s performance about how he was strict on Peter in the movie. But still, like, this is how you do Spider-Man. Like, make it like a high school movie. John Hughes it. Whatever. This is great. Spider-Man's home again. Marvel, don't let go of this. Disney, buy Sony. Buy it completely. Rule the world, Disney. Come on. More Spider-Man like this. In the next five years, Tom Holland's going to make 25. Can't do that. Can't have having Peter Young. <laughs> that would be great, actually. Now we're entering the top three. This is where things get critical. Not like last year, how I was like critical with the top five. But was this one, it was a top three. So, let's go. Blade Runner 2049. I am not actually a fan of Blade Runner. I never seen the original. I only saw this because of Word of Mouth. And I, I heard it was like The Force Awakens, that it was like a soft reboot on the franchise, which it is. You don't see Harrison Ford that much, who was the original Blade Runner. But you do see Ryan Gosling's character, who is the new Blade Runner. And also, this movie makes me sad for a computerized person. Like, like Ryan Gosling's like house computer wife was a virtual person. I felt emotional when like she was sad and she's a, ro a robot wife whatever and she felt sad and I felt sad because she was sad it's like I never done that before so there are some throwbacks to the original which are very vague in that sense kind of like with Force Awakens it and um possibly other movies that do soft reboots on themselves that do soft reboots on themselves it's a little vague you can still kind of get the gist of the previous movie just a little bit. You also hear young Harrison words in this movie as well, like, throughout the point of the movie. So yeah, this movie is, it's beautiful, it's colorful. It's like what an anime movie should be. It should, somehow it feels like a live action anime movie for some reason, because it's like very freaky future of how anime would, how future animes are. Also some shots in this movie that I felt like, they were CGI, but they felt real to me. This movie is not trying to start a franchise. It's not. Our number two movie is Logan. This is a good way to end the X-Men franchise, or the Wolverine franchise, basically the Wolverine franchise. I wonder if Fox knew about Logan dying, because that Logan is the moneymaker of the X-Men. Well, Hugh Jackman, you, you have possibly not that much money involved. It's still X-Men, like, it's not like the Marvel movies, well, it's obviously a, a grand hit every time, because of the critics and fans, and like, well, you have Robert Downey Jr., you have Chris Evans, you have Chris Hemsworth, which are the big three of the main makers for those movies, but only with the Fox movies have, have Wolverine and Hugh Jackman. That's only the big money maker for that franchise. Um, but with this new deal with Fox and Disney, I don't know if we're going to get Hugh Jackman back. Possibly not. I think he's finally done. He could do some like weird time loops and stuff like that. And it would be fun Deadpool Wolverine crossover and 
it was great, but I doubt we're gonna see anything new with Hugh Jackman, possibly with X twenty three, the Wolverine clone daughter, or what Wolverine's clone slash daughter, possibly. So number one, Star Wars: The Last Jedi. I am biased towards Star Wars. I favor it more. I I'm just a Star Wars fanboy, even though I have like a bunch of Power Rangers. This Star Wars is unique. It's different. It's colorful. It's the best anime adaptation. <laughs> it does look like anime sometimes. Same, same with Blade Runner, which, and also Wolverine is also a weeaboo. Um, yeah, I may just drink the Disney Kool-Aid all the time, which I do. Yeah, Star Wars The Last Jedi is different. It's unique. It's fun. It's my number one movie. Do it. Here comes the hate. If there is any. I like that this new Star Wars is going to a new direction. It's it's being different. It's being unique. Keep doing this. There could be fan backlash for this movie and they might change some things in episode 9 to make it safe. But I hope they don't. I hope they go into a new direction where it's different and not play it safe. Not be a fraidy cat to do something different. I like that it was different. Also, small note, three of these movies I saw at home are Dunkirk, Wind River, and Get Out. So, yeah. Well, most of these movies I saw in theaters. So it was a pretty fun year for movies and my theater experience with movies. So obviously you probably have a different list or, someone's, or something similar to mine. Maybe you mix things around, maybe you don't mix your things around. Maybe it's completely the same. You can put your list down below if you want to. I've been Matt in one. This was a great movie year. And see you later, moviegoers.